Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been absolutely sensational as Manchester United's interim manager. And you remember that previously I said that I felt we had to wait until the end of March before making an assessment about whether or not Solskjaer is fit to manage Manchester United full time from next season. That has now changed. I think we've seen enough, more than enough now, to confidently say that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the perfect manager for Manchester United next season. And what I want to do in this video is explain exactly why. It's not just the results on the pitch that we're seeing that has helped Solskjaer transform and turn around what looked like a down and out Manchester United this season into top four favourites. I'm going to run through all of that in this video and as always I want to hear from you in the comments what you think about Solskjaer and whether he is the right man. Now if you are new to United People's TV make sure you get down there, subscribe and get involved and if you are a regular hit that like button but let's get into the video. Now for me the first and most important thing that Solskjaer did was immediately re-establish the culture of Manchester United right from the immediacy of bringing a Norwegian chocolate bar for Kath, our secretary in Carrington. She was there when Solskjaer was a player and remembered him. And the smiles immediately came back to the faces of all the United players and having a manager smiling as well, that made a substantial difference straight away from Solskjaer. Everything that United are doing right now on the pitch, it's, it feels right. It looks like Manchester United again. I'm gonna run through that in a bit more detail as we go through the video, but that's something that Solskjaer has immediately done. He's got that identity back on the pitch. And everything that Solskjaer says off the pitch, he sounds like a Manchester United manager. From, all, from his first, very first interview as United's interim manager through to every single pre and post-match press conference. I look at Solskjaer and I think, yeah, he's presenting himself exactly how United should be presented. And he looks like the United manager. He's enjoying what he's doing. The players are enjoying playing under him. He's got the players wearing suits to away games, which might seem like a small thing, but for me, it's just re-establishing that identity. And he's put it all together. He looks like United's manager. He sounds like United's manager. And he's got United playing the United way again. And all of those combined are helping create a wonderful atmosphere back at a club which felt slightly toxic under Jose Mourinho. It's brought back that identity of Manchester United. And in that three month period that we've had under Solskjaer, Phelan, Carrick and McKenna, they've repaired so much of the damage that was done in the years under Mourinho, Van Gaal and Moyes. In such a short space of time, United feel like United again. And of course, the results on the pitch are probably the most impressive thing that we've seen so far. But behind that upturn is the, it's the surge of the form of the players. The same players that played under Jose Mourinho and now all singing from the same hymn sheet. Paul Pogba, one of Europe's most informed players. Marcus Rashford, Manchester United's number nine. And he's confident in what he's doing right now. Luke Shaw and Victor Lindelof, both helping this Manchester United defence look completely reformed, like our midfield. Ander Herrera and Nemanja Matic, both with a huge upturn in form. And it's no coincidence that this is all happening at the same time. It's all down to Solskjaer's man management. Paul Pogba, we saw what happened with Jose Mourinho, they clashed. Pogba has been set free by Solskjaer. For want of a better cliche, but it's true. He's been given the freedom to reign in midfield. And with the backup of Matic and Herrera, who now know their roles better, and with the defence that's looking stronger, with Shaw in better form, Lindelof in continued. His season's been fantastic. He's right up there with Paul Pogba for player of the season. Just everywhere you look on the pitch, the players want to play for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And that's making such a difference that is allowing us to have this incredible run of form that we have got on the pitch. And that's certainly what Solskjaer has got most right. But if there's one player in particular I feel sums up Solskjaer's man management success so far, it's Andreas Pereira. Because he was a player that was cast into the shadows by Jose Mourinho after starting in midfield in a sort of number six role, had a couple of poor performances, was pushed to the side, never seen again. Now, Pereira was started against Burnley by Solskjaer. He had a terrible game, at fault for the first goal, certainly hooked off by Solskjaer correctly. But instead of getting pushed to the side and ignored and forgotten about, with injuries, Solskjaer brought him on against Liverpool instead of Fred, the £52 million signing. And Pereira played fantastic alongside Scott McTominay in midfield. And then he goes and scores a banger against Burnley. Pereira is a player who typifies how successful this individual man management can be and how it suits Manchester United. Mourinho's cutthroat type style of management worked at Chelsea, worked at Real Madrid. 
they're the sorts of clubs where that works. But at Manchester United, it hasn't worked. So we needed someone to come in that's got more of a, a human man management, a one-to-one -one personal style of management. And that's the success we've seen with Pereira, and that's the success we've seen with Pogba, with Rashford, with everybody in the squad. But for me, Pereira typifies that success. And of course, with all of these improved performances, United's on the pitch success has been nothing short of phenomenal. And the thing I really want to point out here when I run through the results that United have had under Solskjaer is look at all the different types of wins that we have had because it's not just all been plain sailing and it's not all been the same style. Of course, it all started with Cardiff and United against Cardiff were fantastic. There was an immediate upturn and not only did we score one, two, three, we kept going four, we kept going five. United attacked and attacked and attacked and was scoring fluid, sexy, sexy goals. And this was so soon after Mourinho went that nobody expected it to be such an immediate upturn, but it was. And it didn't stop there because we had Huddersfield, we had Bournemouth, we had Newcastle, we had Reading, five wins out of five. Jesus, nobody expected that. But then Spurs came. Everybody's like, ooh, this is where Solskjaer is going to be undone. No, he wasn't. Solskjaer employed a diamond formation with split strikers that Pochettino did not see coming. The man who was widely considered at that point to be the favourite for the job was outclassed in that first half by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Tactically, Pochettino didn't expect it. And we hit on the counter-attack, Pogba's ball over to Rashford. That individual moment of brilliance won the game for us, as did David De Gea's heroics in the second half, of course. But everybody expected Solskjaer to be outdone and outclassed and outgunned by Spurs. And it couldn't be further from the truth in that first half that was just a masterclass of tactics from Solskjaer that nobody thought he had in his locker. He proved it that day. And then everybody expected United to falter against Arsenal away. <laughs> Far from falter, we absolutely dominated. It was like us playing Arsenal of old. Real proper counter-attacking football. Exposing Arsenal's high line, balls over the top. They couldn't stop us. They got a goal back, we got a third. It was a wonderful, wonderful occasion. Jesse Lingard once again dancing at the Emirates. But again, that was down to the tactics and the style that Solskjaer employed on that day. He used our strengths and he exposed Arsenal's weaknesses. And it wasn't a case of United going into a big game, sitting deep like we did on Mourinho and hope to get a goal. We puffed our chests out. We used our own strengths and they couldn't stop us. So we've got five wins from five in his first five games. Then we played Spurs. Everyone thought we were going to mess that up. Then we had a couple more games. Then we had Arsenal. Everybody's still expecting us to mess up, but we're not at all. And that's all down to Solskjaer. In the biggest games, Solskjaer delivered. And then there was another aspect that we saw, and that came against Burnley. Man United 2-0 down at home, getting outplayed by Burnley, a poor performance, and it looked like the bubble was going to burst. Instead, Manchester United go and score two goals in injury time, and go to show a serious spirit that we hadn't seen, I don't really feel, in some time. Yes, Mourinho, you had the Juventus game. There was lots of comebacks under Mourinho, but that one there against Burnley, I thought we were down and out. Was it 88th minute we got one back? I thought we were down and out. But we clawed it back. And Solskjaer proved that even in the face of adversity, he can get these players playing the United way driving forward until the final, final whistle. And we got our just reward. So that's a different type of performance from Solskjaer. And that's why that Burnley game is so important and shouldn't be ignored. Then if you look at the PSG game and the matches we had around it, we saw another aspect. Because for Fulham, we rested Marcus Rashford and Victor Lindelof, our two most informed players at that time alongside Paul Pogba. But instead of the momentum leaving the team before PSG, we won 3-0 and we played incredible football without two of our most informed players. So Solskjaer rested his key players for that PSG game. Now, obviously, against PSG, we were humbled. The injuries in the first half certainly didn't help that performance, but we were just outclassed in every aspect of the pitch. And it was at this point where everyone was like, right, here we go. This is where we're going to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and what he can do. Because when you're winning, everything's great. When you're losing, how can you respond? How about beating, pummeling, Destroying Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Only Manchester United's fourth win there in 26 games. And we did it. 
We breeze through it. Brilliant, brilliant goals, but just an overall sensational performance to the point where Sari was booed off at half-time and full-time by Chelsea. Yeah, it might have been a good time to play Chelsea, but it's been great times to play Chelsea previously. It's meant fuck all. And to do that after PSG was just perfect. That's the character that you wanted to see from United. At 2-0 down against Burnley, we can show that character. Can we do it after we've been taken apart by PSG against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge? You're fucking right we can. And then we can follow it up as well in the next game against Liverpool at home when the odds were so against us. We lost Nemanja Matic due to injury before the game. In the game, we lost Herrera, we lost Mata, and then we lost Lingard, who came on for Mata. Three injuries before half-time, just like PSG. We lost so many players in that first half. Is it going to kill us? No. Liverpool have one shot on target. This free score in front three of Liverpool did absolutely shit all against United at Old Trafford. And we had Pereira and McTominay in midfield. Two players who, again, previously hadn't performed, but were now performing under Solskjaer. So again, we've seen another, another tick in the box of Solskjaer, as far as I'm concerned. Can he cope with the injuries? In such a massive game as well, you're damn right he can. The squad wants it. And you saw it against Liverpool. Maybe we lacked the quality in the final third, but that's because we were missing our main strikers, and our main striker himself was injured and played the whole 90 minutes. But as a unit... We shut Liverpool down, and that was another huge tick for me. And then straight after Liverpool, you're, look, we ha who did we have injured? We had Rashford, we had Martial, we had Mata, we had Matic, we had Herrera. I think Darmian was out as well. Rojo obviously still injured. Greenwood was a young, young Canby player who could have come in. Tons of injuries. I think we had 10 first team players out for that Crystal Palace game. That should be where the wheels fall off. Because the squad that we've got right now under Solskjaer, for me, is an excellent starting eleven. But I think outside of that, it's a little bit weak. It wasn't against Crystal Palace. Romelu Lukaku came in, scored two goals. Ashley Young popped up with a third to seal the game. It was, a, it was a tough first 20 minutes, but United didn't really lose too much momentum, despite having so many injuries. And then Southampton, on top of that, the best dramatic win that we've had under Solskjaer so far. United, 1-0 down, a hell of a goal by Southampton. Pereira comes up with a worldie of an equaliser. We go 2-1 up thanks to Lukaku again. But then James Ward-Prowse bangs in a free kick, 2-0. You're thinking, it's going to be one of those days. But then no, United kept going and going and going and Lukaku cropped up with a goal and Old Trafford was booming. So, so far under Solskjaer, we've seen a wonderful start, backed up with four wins. Then Spurs away, a tactical masterclass from Solskjaer. Then Arsenal puffed his chest out. United played like United. Then we've had games where we've rested players like Fulham. Disappointments like PSG, which we've reacted to, like Chelsea, like Liverpool, cope with the injuries, like Palace and Southampton. I mean, how much more do you want to see from Solskjaer? Yes, we're probably going to get knocked out of the Champions League, but PSG are levels above us. What we're doing right now in the Premier League it's title winning form and all of that is down to the mint, mint work that Solskjaer is doing as manager. But as we all know, every great manager isn't a great manager simply because of the results on the pitch. They have to represent themselves on and off the pitch in the right way. And one thing I really have enjoyed so far under Solskjaer is seeing a bit of a ruthless side. And I think selling Marrow and Fellaini is the prime example of that. Fellaini is a player who was fairly or unfairly lambasted and scapegoated by United fans for years. Solskjaer came in and within one month he decided that he didn't fit the style that he wanted to play at United and he sold him to China. That's as ruthless as it gets. Fellaini was a good player for United but he was a never a United player and he certainly jarred against the style. Imagine dropping Fellaini into the style we're doing right now. It just wouldn't work. And Solskjaer saw that and got rid of him. Ruthless. And United fans loved him for it. And then you see Antonio Valencia. The news has come out now that he won't get a contract extension. He'll be leaving United in the summer. This is a player who all United fans have seen decline in the last few years and know that he's not good enough to play for United anymore at right back. But despite being club captain, having been in the club for 10 years, Solskjaer saw that too. He gave him an opportunity, but the performances weren't good enough. He got dropped. 
and now he's going to be moved on in the summer. That ruthless side is something that no United manager I feel has properly had. And I feel that, like, look at what Guardiola did at Man City. In his second year, he just, he culled that squad of the players he didn't want and he got in exactly who he wanted in his style. I think Solskjaer is capable of doing just that. And what he's done with Fellaini and what we will be seeing with Valencia going out the door are two major decisions that I didn't know whether he was capable of making. And he was. So again, that's another major tick for me on the Solskjaer's box. And with all these correct decisions, it's helping create the environment for correct things to happen. Because Anthony Martial certainly wouldn't have signed a new long-term contract if Mourinho was still here. But with Solskjaer in charge, he's got the confidence that this United team going forward is the one that he wants to be part of. And again, that's all down to Solskjaer. And something else he's certainly doing in the right way is using the youth players in the academy. You look at Tahith Chong, you look at James Garner. Two teenagers who have now made their Premier League debut under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Angel Gomez has been in and around the squad. All three of them went to the warm weather training camp in Dubai. Mason Greenwood would have made his debut if not for poor timed injuries. That's unlucky for him. But Solskjaer is using the academy players and it's not just lip service. It's not just so he can keep the fans' favour on side, which I feel Louis van Gaal did somewhat, although he did bring through Marcus Rashford, although that was only down to Anthony Martial's injury. But anyway... Looking back at Solskjaer, the academy players have got to be buzzing about the idea of having him in charge because they've got a clear path to that first team now. They really, really do. Andreas Pereira and Scott McTominay, look how much they've enjoyed playing under Solskjaer. It just works. Solskjaer was our reserves manager for two years. He knows the struggles that those players go through to try and get into the first team. He's seen it all firsthand. So he can manage that better than most. And he certainly is so far. So it's a very, very exciting time for all of United's young players. You've only got to look at United's fans to see how much of an impact, a positive impact Solskjaer is having. Look at the away ends. They're as loud and as continuous as they have been in years. But almost more impressively, look at Old Trafford against Liverpool. Look at Old Trafford against Southampton. It was loud. There was a genuine atmosphere in there, in a ground which has been flat for years. And that's all because of the work that Solskjaer has done in bringing the culture back to the club, improving the players' form, improving the results, making the right decisions, presenting himself correctly on and off the pitch. All of these have helped re-establish this identity back at Manchester United. And that's all down to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And if he were to leave it now in the summer, and someone like Pochettino came in, changes would be made to it, inevitably. And I don't know, I don't think that United would make that decision. They wouldn't take that risk. And I don't know why they would, because the work he's done has been nothing short of sensational. But I want to know what you think about Solskjaer. Do you think he is the perfect manager for United? Or do you think there are still things that can happen that could change your mind? I want to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below, as always. If you are new to United People's TV and you are still here, I like that. Make sure you subscribe down there. Until next time, though, take it easy.